Hey guys, it's Robert Powers. Uh, today I'm going to discuss some of the finer points on the sole of a shoe. Um, and over here I have what I would consider a cheaper shoe, um, a moderately expensive shoe, um, and an expensive shoe. So this is a Bostonian, uh, a pair of Allen Edmonds, and a pair of Salvatore Ferragamos, okay? Now all three of these, as you can see, are black loafers, okay? Uh, the Bostonians here are a pair of wingtip loafers with a medallion. You see the wingtip design. This is a tassel. I'm sorry, this is a kilt. This is a tassel, okay? Um, and this pair here of Allen Edmonds, this is, what model is this? Saratoga, I believe, right? Uh, this is an older pair. Um, let's see, I think it's Saratoga. And this is a moccasin toe. You see this, the moccasin toe tassel loafer, okay? And then here we have a pair of Ferragamos, okay? So this is a wingtip tassel loafer, right? Very elegant, with no medallion, okay? There's no, no holes in the toe. Now, let's look at the bottom of these shoes, okay? So this uh, half sole was added on that did not come on the shoe. Okay, we see, you know, they're quite worn. Allen Edmonds, Goodyear, Goodyear welted 360 degree. If you don't know what that means, uh, put a link to explain. And then here you have the Ferragamos. So now at first glance, once you start to learn a little bit about shoes, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that that stitching is a good feature, okay? If it's real stitching, which on Allen Edmonds it is, and you can quite clearly see the bumps on the top side where the stitching comes through the top, and that's one of the things uh, Allen Edmonds shoes are known for, is to have that stitching all the way around the shoe. So when you see this shoe, you say, ah, okay, I'm starting to learn about shoes. This was like a, probably like an $89, I think, retail price shoe. No stitching, and I can tell you that these shoes okay, um, are not of really good quality. These are lower quality leather, and the leather sole is bonded or glued on. So if you don't know much about shoes, you may say this one and say, oh, you know, there's no stitching, uh-uh-uh. Well, first of all, I'll put a link to a couple other videos explaining what a closed or hidden channel stitch is. You see right there, the tip of the toe is worn, and what do you see peeking out? you see stitching peeking out, okay? So this is what's called hidden channel stitching. And again, I've done another video on that, so I'm not gonna really focus on that. But what this starts to tell you is when you see this right here, you say, okay, wait a minute. This is a feature that's actually, you know, hidden. You know, most manufacturers would want you to see this stitching, and here it's actually hidden. So this gives you a clue, this is a real deal. This is the area of the shoe I wanna focus on today, okay? Notice, first of all, one feature. The, the waist of the shoe is the area of the shoe between the heel, okay, and the sole, okay? So this area would be the waist. I don't know if you can tell, but on the Bostonian, it's flat, and it's basically uh, almost the same width, okay? This measurement here is almost the same width as the heel itself, okay? And the heel, if you look at the heel, it's pretty much a symmetrical heel, okay? So in other words, you could use the same, this part that touches the ground, you can see here there's the separate pieces called the top lift versus the heel base. You could use the same top lift on the left and right shoe. In other words, it could be made from the same, if I can get these things to stay upside down, okay? They both could be made from the same part, okay? It's symmetric. Now let's take a look at the Allen Edmonds here. Allen Edmonds shoes. By the way, again, this retail price on this shoe is like $89. The list retail price on these Allen Edmonds um, is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood between either $300 or $425. Um, you know, there's some different models. Some of the loafers are less expensive, but at least $300 bucks full re retail price. So you can see it's good you're welted. But again, it's got kind of the standard waist, okay? The waist is not extra narrow, and the top lift uh, again, this top lift is the same shape as the factories. It's been replaced, you know, but it is symmetric. You know, in other words, you can use the same one on the left and right shoe. Now, look at the Ferragamos. Let me look at these. This is sometimes a little difficult to do, uh, one-handed. Now let's start to look. First of all, feature number one. Can you see how the sole is rounded? Can you tell? Okay, try and get it in some good light so you can really see this. Okay, can you see that? Okay, it's very clearly rounded. It's convex. It is not flat. You see how the light reflects off it? 
Hope that shows up in the video clearly, okay? So, and then you'll also see how narrow it is. You see that? The black is hard to get this to show up in the video. Do you see how right here, how skinny that is? I'll, I'll do like an informal measurement here if I do this, okay, compared to that. Maybe if I put them side by side, that's easier to, to show. And it's black on black. I know the sole edge is black, so it's hard to tell a little bit. But do you see that? How narrow that waist is, okay? So this is a narrowed, okay, or also referred to as a slender waist, and it's beveled. Now, uh, um, I'm not a professional, okay, um, and I would hate to put information out that's incorrect, um, but I'm, uh, part of the reason I'm putting this video out now is because these shoes don't fit me, okay? They're a 12A, okay? They're a very narrow shoe. They do not fit me, and I'm not going to have them for that much longer, so I wanted to capture this information while I had the shoe, okay? Also, I'm limited on how much free time I have to do this kind of stuff. This is not my profession, okay? Um, so, but anyway... Slender or narrowed waist, my understanding is that refers to the width here, okay? So in other words, it has that hourglass shape where the heel is wider, it's narrowed or slender, and then comes back out, okay? My understanding is beveled refers to this rounded shape, you know, versus these that are completely flat, okay? And then there's actually something else called a fiddleback waist, and I'm not going to use somebody else's photos because I don't want to, you know, use a picture from a website of, you know, somebody else's product, you know, something that I don't own, and I don't have a fiddleback waist. But you'll see some of them are actually much more, much more rounded this, and then fiddleback, you'll see there'd be like a straight line here and like a Y shape, so it'll be a straight line that's a crease, and then it'll be a crease and a crease, and this part, instead of being rounded, will be like a V shape, okay? And then that's called a fiddleback waist, and I think it refers to like a fiddle or a violin. And you'll see even more sculpting, okay? So I know that may, to some of you, seem like, oh, big deal, uh, but the reason this is a big deal is this is, um, this is one, makes this, just the shoe look more sleek and slender, okay? For example, compared to the Allen Edmonds, especially on the instep, do you see that? And you're looking at the sole, it like disappears up. See how cool that looks? Okay. I mean, in other words, to me, this is reminiscent of a woman, right, with a very narrow waist. Okay. And that's a feature that men in general are attracted to is a woman with, you know, the hips, waist. Okay. So it takes on that, you know, human form, you know, versus this one. Do you see? It's not a big difference. Okay. Now, another reason is because this is much easier to manufacture. So to obviously, as time progresses, you know, uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, every five or 10 years, it seems like something that was available only in handmade or custom, you know, this then becomes, uh, um, you know, e easier to do machine uh, or for the public. But in general, this has always been something that just basically shouts and says, hey, I'm custom, I'm special. So Sarah, uh, Salvatore Ferragamo um, is one of a few shoe companies that makes ready-to-wear shoes, meaning not... Um, you know, not like a bespoke. Bespoke means made to you, okay? Uh, that makes ready-to-wear shoes that come with a beveled waist. Not very many shoe manuf manufacturers do that. Um, so I believe like Edward Green does. There's a few shoe manufacturers. So a second thing is this is basically not necessarily functional, but artistic, and it's a way just to elevate the shoe manufacturer to show, you know, that it is more expensive. Now let me show you a couple other things. Look at the height of that heel. Okay, do you see the height of that heel? Okay. Compared to the Allen Edmonds, it's higher. And then also, if you see the heel height, compare that to the Bostonian, it's much higher. It elevates it. And do you see how this, uh, um, I, I don't know if you'd call this the tongue, but the vamp area here, how long it is, right? It's very reminiscent to me. It almost looks like, um, you know, some uh, a royalty or a king would wear something like this, you know, in the 1800s. It's, you know you know, got that kind of feel to it. So, you know, I think this is the kind of shoe that, uh, you know, most average people may not notice something, but, um, you know, it, it'll set you apart a little bit, okay? So, a couple other little things, and I'll show the, in order here. The heel, okay? Not a huge difference, but here, okay, we know this is bonded on. Notice how the upper curves down where it attaches to the heel. You see how that's done? Okay, okay. And the Allen Edmonds. Now this is 360 degree Goodyear welted. See, it's actually tighter, right? Even though it has stitching, you would think it'd be easier for the Bostonian to get that tighter because there's no stitching, you know, on top. Okay, the welt to the sole. But look at this. 
Look how tight that is. You see this comes down and there's like almost no gap there. See how elegant and sleek that is? Isn't that kind of nice? Okay. And I'm looking at this. This edge looks like to me it might be just pitched back just a couple degrees. Definitely looks like it's not parallel there. So another feature, see how sculpted this is? Okay. Ferragamo versus the Allen Edmonds versus a Bostonian. Okay. So you're very rarely going to see this. So, and here's another thing. They call this, I think they call this a quarter rubber heel where you have leather and rubber. Okay. The higher end Allen Edmonds will have that as well. So, you know, with the real brass nails. So, um, anyway, we get a couple more nice shots of these shoes together. All right. And I didn't put a ridiculous spit shine on them. I did put a couple three coats, but you see a decent spit shine going. You can see a reflection in there. Aren't they pretty? Very elegant shoe, right? And actually, if you notice, the wing tips go all the way back, so this will be a long wing. Okay. Oh, and there's the Ferragamo logo. Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? Made in Italy. Okay. And they have full length leather insoles. Right. And we'll see the back. Stitch along the back. So you can see the stacked leather construction with the wheeling there. You see those lines? Okay. So, hope you like that. Hope you learned something. And if I am incorrect on my terminology, um, you know, like I said, let me know. I'm sure there's some cobblers or shoemakers that might be viewing this. Uh, make sure that I have the terminology correct. Narrow or slender waist versus beveled. The only thing that I was not 100% sure on is um, beveled waist. I believe beveled waist, again, ter you know, refers to this roundedness, not the narrowing. Um, but generally speaking, I think all the shoes I've ever seen that have a beveled waist also are narrowed as well. So um, just make sure I have that correct. Um, if I have that incorrect, I apologize. Again, this is not my, you know, living. Um, and again, I'm not going to have these shoes for that much longer. So I needed to get this uh, video made before I don't have them anymore. Um, hope you enjoyed that. And if you want to, you know, see some of the other stuff that I've done, go to my channel. Thanks, guys.